Hi, I'm Martin Sibley, a community leader at Open Inclusion. Welcome to our podcast series, Inclusive Design, Broader Perspectives for Better Experiences. Also available as a caption podcast on Open Inclusion's YouTube channel. Open Inclusion is a research, user insight, design and innovation consultancy based in London, England. We help organisations create beautifully inclusive and effective experiences. If you would like to know more about the work we do or would like to contact us, please visit openinclusion.com. We would love to hear from you. In this podcast series, we're interviewing a wide range of people who help us to better understand inclusion, both from a user and service provider perspective. Now, today we're going to be talking to Edward Richards, who's going to be giving his experience as a user or a disabled person. He's a deaf guy. So we're going to have some really interesting discussions around British Sign Language, BSL, and part of how it fits as part of his identity. We're going to be looking at the time that he emceed an event in the Shard of all places, and he didn't actually speak a word. Um, so it's really watch out for that story. It's fascinating. And last but not least, we're going to be talking about a recent video that he was involved in and what it meant to him to be able to be part of that video project, just like everybody else was. So I hope you're going to enjoy watching or listening to this as much as I have um, speaking with Ed and, and hearing his stories and experiences. And um, let's get stuck in. Well, thank you for joining us today, Ed. It's really good to have you on the podcast. Hello, Martin. Nice to see you. Cool. Well, um, we're going to get to hear lots about you and your you know, personal life and your professional life and... Um, all about the different topics of inclusion. So we've got lo lots of time to share with the viewers and the listeners a bit more about you. But just to kick off, I just wanted to ask, just to give like a couple of sentences, a little bit about who you are for people to, to get to know you in the very beginning, if that's okay. Okay. Um, my name's Ed, my, my sign name is Edward. This deaf community gave me that many years ago um, because I have a mole just here on my chin. That's my sort of visual identifier. Um, who am I? Uh, I'm a deaf person. I was born deaf. I went to deaf schools throughout my sort of schooling years, both mainstream and um, specific deaf schools. Um, I've been to both. Um, education wasn't really that good for me. Um, and lucky my parents really supported me, um, and I learned really how to sort of what I wanted out of life by some of my interests. Sports, I love you know going out, and traveling. Uh, I play hockey with a local club in Wapping. Um, it's one of my passions. Um, personal interests as well. I like walking, reading, films, lots of things. Anything cultural, I guess. Art, especially. I do also give art tours in BSL. British Sign Language as well is what BSL is. That's my first language, so I use that to communicate. Um, because BSL is something that is a language, as structure, syntax, linguistic, is my preferred way of communicating. Especially with my deaf friends at the time as well. It's, I go out and enjoy going out into the deaf community, deaf pub, and meeting deaf friends and speaking and sort of socialising that way. I've also got my own business. I'm a graphic designer, graphic, graphic design company. And uh, my passion is inclusive design. And what inclusive design means to me is, is the greatest number of people can access the information that is available. And it... It's not trying to make people excluded or making it exclusive, but it's inclusive. 
Great, thank you for that. <clears throat> you kind of um, preempted my first question. I, I want to go into look at identity. I think that's a really important area when we're doing interviews and when we're looking at inclusion about how the guests sort of identify with their disability and how that interacts with the, the world and obviously the barriers that we all face as disabled people. So for, for I really, it'd be great for people that are not as sure about BSL, which you've already touched upon, just to explain what it is and what your relationship is with it. Okay. Um, BSL, British Sign Language, um, is a language that's been sort of used for many years by the deaf community. It's the way we communicate, it's the way we understand each other. Um, and we do this by meeting a deaf club, deaf pub, and each other in the deaf community. It's the way we express ourselves, talk about news, what's happening, and it's the way we understand information. It's got its own grammar, structure, syntax, linguistics. I mean, it is a language, it's not just gesture, and it's a beautiful language, I love it. Um, what it means to me, what my relationship to BSL is, um, I grew up as a deaf person. I went to deaf schools and, and I was able to communicate with deaf people that I know. When I grew up, I did go to an oral deaf school, but there were deaf children and we were not encouraged to sign, but we signed when we could when we were together. Mm -hmm. and we were hoping that no one caught us and took us off. And we were hoping that didn't happen, but it didn't. Um, I've been caught a few times, I guess, when I was at school. Um, but part of my life um, is the way I communicate. Um, I mean, it's the best way for me to take in information and understand it, and it's also the best way for me to respond to somebody else. If um, there's no problem with me understanding things in BSL, it's, it's a more relaxed way of getting information that I can use. Yeah, no, no, what I love about it, I, I think I mentioned to you before, Ed, my cousin's profoundly deaf, so I grew up not really ever learning BSL officially, but we just managed to communicate together, and I obviously just picked up BSL here and there from him. But I love the expressiveness, the expressions on the face. And would you say that's quite a big, important part of the language as well? I would, yeah. Um, I think what is interesting that I know that some deaf people who have um, home language BSL, which has elements of BSL in it, but in the home language there's regular signs, there's everyday things that they use, they, they communicate with their family, cousins and things like that. Um, they all know, oh, that's what he means by that, or that's what she means by that. And that sort of helps relationships, build relationships within fam families, which I think is good. Yeah, yeah, great. And so I'm mean, going to ask you why it's important. Again, I think you've you know, touched upon some of it, and I think people probably could guess why it's important as well. But particularly if you explain a little bit more about your business as well, it'd be great just to expand on why BSL is so important for your job. Well, um, I think because every day I have barriers outside, out there in the big world, Sometimes the language is so complex. So, for instance, if I go to a website and try and find some information, when I'm reading it in English, I'm not sure if I fully understand what they're trying to say to me. It's full of jargon, technical language. And I read it and I think I'm not clear. And I. I think of a way that that could have been made accessible to me in, uh, as a deaf person. And then I can then look at uh, 
what the information is and translate it into BSL, and then I can explain it to somebody else. And that gives me a better understanding. And I think as well, if we sort of simplify things into um, English from the BSL, it means that hearing people can maybe understand the information better. As well, I think for me, it's important that I'm just clarifying. Yeah, it's make it quicker and easier for people to access information that they want to access rather than them not being able to access it. Yeah, okay. And another point to touch upon with with technology. How do you, how, has any technology recently been a positive help uh, using with BSL or without? I think one of the great things that's happened in the last few years is VRS, which is Video Relay Service. What it means is, for example, Sign Video, a company, they they actually have a contract with my bank. And what that means, if I need to speak to somebody about something to do with my bank or a transaction or something, I can go to the bank's website, I can click on um, accessibility, I can then go to the sign video link. And what that means is I've got access to an interpreter live. And then they phone the bank through the bank's secure channel and the bank then can speak to me. And that makes it more comfortable for me. And I know then I can ask questions about my account. I can ask the old way, which was a minicom, which was an old phone. I had to wait. I had to type my question. They then had to relay that question. Then they had to understand what was being asked, type it back. I had to read it, understand what they were asking, and then type that in that process. This is visual, this is my world. So now I can do it in real time, it's short time, I'm a busy person, I can do it two or three minutes, like a hearing person can. And you know, 20 minutes after, you know, you using before the minicom, I've wasted half my time trying to get through, did I understand really? This much better quality of me contacting the bank and feeling that I've, you know, been understood. And that's sort of improved my quality of life, I believe. Mm. Because I'm on an equal footing. I'm on an equal footing with hearing people. Because I see hearing people they have a problem, they just pick up the phone, speak to someone, it's dealt with, put down the phone, get on with their day. I can do that now. I wanted that same for such a long time. Now I've got it. VR gives me that. Yeah. That's really powerful because it, it obviously preserves the importance of BSL. Um, as the language and as all part of your identity that we're talking about, but it still enables you to have inclusion. So to me, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, I think as well, what's important for me, I guess before when there was no VRS or there was no way for me to get um, access, everything was English. The only time that I could use and my sign language was when I was meeting deaf people. But now, more and more, because of VRS, I can contact banks and council and other services that have the VRS. I can use my language more and more in my every day. And what it does is um, allows me to be me every day. So I have an interpreter who works with me every day. And that means I can get on with my day, get on with my business, contact people when I want to. Um, now, in my own language, which I feel that that's it's me. That's who I am and what I do. And I'm just now able to do it in my own language. Yeah, well, that's really cool. Thank you for that, Ed. So moving on to the next section, um, I want to talk a bit about when you emceed at the Shard at the event, I think it was about a year ago. And um, to kick that off, if you just could explain a little bit more about your role and your relationship 
with open inclusion obviously we i work with you as a panel lead but just give a little bit more of a background to that relationship before we talk about the event okay um I suppose my relationship with Open is um, I'm a panel lead for hearing impairment. Um, and that's when we talk about hearing impairment, that's, we're talking about a spectrum of people with hearing loss, not just people who use BSL, people who are hard of hearing, people who are deafened, people who are deaf oral, people who are deaf blind. I mean, there's such a variance, um, including people that use BSL. There's people with cochlear implant, um, and it's how to talk about them in a way that improves access for all of them on the sort of deafened spectrum. And that's my role in Open. Great. So, yeah, obviously moving into that event then, Open were running it. Can you explain a bit more about how you ended up becoming the MC and... and what the actual event was about as well. I think the event was uh, about accessibility and improving accessibility, particularly around websites and the internet. Um, I was asked by Tom from Open if I'd be interested in being the MC because they were thinking they wanted something different. If we're talking about accessibility, they wanted to be different, to show difference, diversity. Um, and I think having a deaf person be an MC, a sign user, is, is showing people that, you know, people with a disability that you expect or don't expect can do something, can. So we wanted to show that. And I think they wanted to see me, and I enjoyed the idea of being challenged to be in that sort of different environment. I'm used to being a public speaker, but this is a very sort of niche area I've ever seen. Um, and I, I, was, I, I was interested to do it because I, I wanted to see if I could enjoy doing it. And so I wondered, how did it go? Well, how, did, how were people's reaction? Well, I know there was the blog post, wasn't there, about the MC that didn't actually speak a word. What, what was the reaction from the delegates about it? I think it was funny um, because when I stood up and uh, started, I actually had the interpreter I'm using today, Tony, uh, with me at the event. He was sitting down opposite me and so someone handed me the microphone and we said, no, no, I handed it to Tony. And that started everyone just sort of looking around thinking, what's going on? We don't understand what's happening. Um, why is the MC just given the microphone away? And then when I started to sign, people then just looked a bit, uh, what's happening now? Uh, then Tony started to voice over, people don't know where to look. They were, they were looking at him, where's the voice coming from? It's not coming from him. He's waving his arms around. The voice is coming from over there. <laughs> and then they started to realize, ah, okay, he's deaf. Sign language interpreter's over there. He's voicing over. So after about, I don't know, a couple of minutes, people started to relax into the idea. Okay, so he's talking, the voice is coming from over there. We're going to look at him, listen to the voice. And then it becomes natural. I think when I sign and the interpreter's over there, people usually look at the interpreter first. And then at the event, because people were sitting down, because because the interpreter was sitting down at a table looking at me, everybody was already looking at me. Yeah. And they couldn't see where the voice was coming from. They, so it was good for them to understand, look at me, I'm signing, but you just need to hear the words come from somewhere else. Yeah. And then the dynamic then changed. It was really interesting for me, and it was really interesting the way it worked out. And the way I was 
able to engage with people by getting eye contact. It was great. I really enjoyed it. No, that's really cool. I wish I could have been there to see it. It sounds like a really good event. Yeah, it was. It was. It was great. I think it was... Um, it allowed me, I think, to be an MC, not to be a deaf person, not to be disabled, just to be aired as an MC. Um, I didn't do anything different. I don't think they expected anything different. I'm me. I'm your MC, and I'm going to run the evening for you, and we'll see how we go. And the flow went quite good, and there was one or two other deaf people there. Um, one for the deaf audience was a more oral, and they used what they call a, a Roger pen, which is a way for them. It sort of links to their hearing aid and improves and <laughs> empowers them to hear more. And that was a challenge for me. I was thinking, okay, so what we needed to do, we needed to go have the Roger pen with the microphone to travel around the room. So it was technology that was the issue, not being disabled. Um, but what we were showing people was in that variety as well of the deaf community. And that's important, I think. So I think with that, the event, Open Inclusion, had sponsored it. I think they've, over the time, they've sponsored some events, but obviously their core service is around helping the clients with understanding the needs of different parts of the disabled community. So I know there was another project that you were involved in with a client of Opens where it was around e-learning. So it'd just be great for you to, to share a bit more about what the e-learning involved. Obviously we can't mention the, the name of the organization, but yeah, just a bit more what you did for the project. That'd be really great to hear. Okay. Um... I think the e-learning project was really interesting um, because I was filmed and interviewed um, about me. It was about me. It wasn't about my disability. It was about my daily life, where I work, maybe what barriers I have when I am sort of trying to develop my business. Again, it was talking about how I communicate, um, how I am able to communicate with people outside of my business. And it was trying to show, I guess, a different perspective of um, I suppose I always see myself as Ed. I'm just Ed. Uh, happen to use a different language. Um, I don't even know if I'm disabled. I think the disability comes from outside. I think, and that's how I see myself. And watching the video that was made, that's what I saw as well. I was just Ed talking about my life, just like any other person would be. I think as well, for example, if you took off the voiceover of that video and you took off the captioning, um, you might see me signing a bit, but people looking on would just see, oh, this is a deaf guy. Um, so that's one aspect. But when you add back the signing, the voiceover and the subtitles, you just realise you're learning about a guy. Um, and it just felt like I was like everybody else, just using a different language. If you imagine that you're creating a documentary with a hearing person, um, and the, the expectation from the audience is, oh, he's like me, he's just one of us, he's just a bloke. Um, and you see this person as they are, that's what the documentary showed me as. I'm just having to be signing. Like, I'm no one special. I just use a different language. Just talking about my life, how I want people to treat me as a person. 
and treat me the way I want, not the way you want, but also as an equal, not as a non-equal. I enjoyed watching the video. I, was, I, I liked the way they edited and showed me at work and at home. And it's a bit odd, actually. It's surreal looking at myself talking about me. Um, I was thinking, God, is that me? Uh, I looked relaxed. I looked happy with who I am. Um, I just want to get on with my life. And that's what the video sort of said. Yeah, that's really nice that they're able to pull that off. And I wanted people to understand that as well. You know, it wasn't... I'm just asking him what he wants. Yeah. Like, I wanted them to meet me, not meet somebody else. I wanted them to treat me how they would want to be treated when they meet someone, you know? Yeah. Don't treat me differently. Just... If you can sign, then we can communicate. If you can't, then we can't. But don't treat me differently because you can't. Yeah, no, that's a really important message for people to hear. And I know that um, on this particular uh, project, it was for you and Tony, I think you both were quite taken by how well the production team and the support that Open Inclusion had given to the production team and, you know, making sure that everything could run really smoothly i think to have this exact outcome um is really important to give everyone that you know thumbs up and well done for 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 making that happen um i just wondered if um you and tony had any thoughts together on that before we move on for me edward is saying now i thought the the video team and the post-production, the editing, how they sort of made the final cut. They made me, it just looked natural to me. I, I, I just looked like a guy, this is Ed, just another bloke, talking about his life, talking about his experiences, just someone who happens to be deaf. Yeah. And that was it. That's what I liked about it. It wasn't, there was no, I don't, I'm not even sure what the word is, but there was no glorification. There was no, you know, special treatment. It was, it was everything about me just being a guy who was talking about his life. Let, let, let's use the horrible word, shall we? Normal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Tony, did you have any couple of thoughts from your perspective? Yeah, I guess for me, as the interpreter watching it, I wasn't the interpreter that voiced over. What I enjoyed about the voiceover, it was another interpreter that works regularly with Edward. His name's Andrew. Fantastic voice. It felt to me like Ed was talking. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not sure if I could have done the same job as well as Andrew did, which is great. <laughs> Andrew's fantastic. But what it did make me feel was that I was listening to Ed. Because I've known Ed for a number of years. And to hear somebody else's, I'm used to my voice talking for Ed. Mm. But to hear somebody else's voice talking for Ed still sounded like Ed. Mm. If I, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, um, it does. Ed is a person that I know and I know really well. Um, the time I spend with him is time I'm at work. He's a work colleague, although he's my boss actually, because I'm his interpreter. But he's my work colleague. And yeah. it felt like I was watching my work colleague on the TV, which was, like I said, surreal and weird, but it was still Ed, because mm. that's all it is. Ed is just a bloke who uses a different language, who has a completely different skill set to me, and I have a different skill set to him. Mm. But I was just watching another guy on TV talk about his life and his work, which I think it is that horrible, that normalising, that word, that normal. And let's celebrate normal, because we're all normal in our normalness. So that's what it showed me. Yeah, it's just a normal guy. I'm just a normal guy. So anybody else out there who's hearing, who hasn't met a deaf guy before, could go, oh, this is a normal guy. Just yeah. use a different language. If, if he was speaking French, people would have thought, I don't understand French, but it's a French bloke talking about being a graphic designer. Yeah. Well, that's what we wanted. Ed was an English bloke talking about being a graphic designer. Just uses a different language. That's all it is. 
It's that simple. But I think people overcomplicate it by trying to make it, I need to be special and treat him differently to make it better for me and him to, no, you don't, you don't. It'd be nice if you learn a bit of sign language. That would be nice. But yeah, so Edward, Edward wants to say, um, what is important for him is, is having a relationship with my interpreters. Um, so, I mean, why that's important is, is they develop a knowledge and understanding of who I am, how I work, what I do, how I communicate with people, so that they're able to show that person me. When I'm signing, they voice over me. They don't voice over them, or I hope they do anyway. I'm, I'm hope, I hope that's the way it comes across. I'm pretty sure it does. But I'm hoping he's, he's doing it now. I don't know if he is. <laughs> um, but that relationship's important for people to understand who I am. I think when you communicate with someone, I think what's... I think for everyday life, unfortunately, I don't have an interpreter in my pocket. See, there, there it is there, right there, mine. I voiced that before he signed it. Because <laughs> I know that's how he feels. Mm. He feels, if he had an interpreter in his pocket, he would just be able to go through life as easy as I do as a hearing person. Yeah, yeah. So when he has an interpreter in his pocket, he uses us to the best that he can so he can get on with his life. And his life is his life, work, social, whatever. Mm. But to have an interpreter in his pocket would be ideal. That he's not using me. He does, he's not saying that I'm a, uh, an age or a technological thing that he needs. He just needs a level playing field. I leave here at three today. I can go out, I can have an accident, I can bump into somebody, I can communicate with them out there and tell them what my needs are. He can't, unless he's got me with him, which is annoying for me as his interpreter. Don't know how frustrating it is him as a deaf bloke. Don't know. <laughs> that was really, that's really nice to, to have both of your perspectives there, so thank you for that. And I'm um, just moving it towards the end of the interview, really, guys. Um, I guess one thing I was going to ask was just, literally two very quick kind of points that you would want the listener to go away with and um, really just a very punchy summary of the things you've been saying and then also what your goals are for the future and how you'd like to achieve those by working with open as well okay i guess um what i'd like listeners viewers to come away with i guess is when they meet a deaf person, don't panic. Don't be scared of us. What do I need to do? What do I need? Don't do that. It's like, you know, like a headless chicken thing. Don't do that. We can see it. We can spot it a mile off. Just meet me. Be calm. Be you. Find our common way to communicate. Don't assume... I'll get paper and a pen, we'll understand each other. Maybe we won't. Because sometime that takes too long and we lose our connection. We'll find a way. If, you, if I've got an interpreter with me, we'll use that. If you've got an interpreter, we'll use that. If we haven't, we'll find a way to talk to each other. If you've got a method of communicating with me, use it. Banks, you know, other services, they can use the VRS system. If you've got an iPad with you and when you bump into me, we can use that. What I want is for us to find a way to communicate with your deaf person that you meet, rather than worry that you can't, so you don't bother. Yeah. I suppose the second point with goal for the future would be... I've noticed when I'm out in the coffee shop, maybe at the supermarket, some people that have learned some limited sign language and they say hello in sign language or they... I know, I know in hearing culture, people don't like pointing. And I don't mind you pointing at me or pointing at a thing. We don't mind that. It's how we, it's visual, it's how we communicate. 
And those little simple things, when they say thank you at the till or whatever, when I've paid my receipt, whatever, I really appreciate that. Because wow. that, that says they identify me as me. Mm-hmm. They know I need that communication. They've bothered to use that. I go away happy thinking, well, they knew who I was. They knew I was deaf. They used my language to communicate with me. And that gives me a positive experience. And I love that. With Open, I guess, my work with them is to try and influence and persuade people who work in big organisations. The more they make their services accessible, the, way, the more they improve their accessibility using BSL for me, captioning, whatever, is encouraging more of the staff that are involved in that is to... Sorry, I'm behind. Um, can we go back? Just when you said that when you work with, or when open work with the clients, you, was, yeah. So he's talking about the fact that opening involved in researching what the clients want, their clients want, what their needs are, and then explains how to provide the right accessible needs for the group they're talking about. I re- researched what deaf people need and gave that to Tom and said, for instance, like big shops, big supermarkets, if you had more staff that can sign by making it accessible, you might sell more things. You might make us use your shop more. Mm-hmm. And that might make you know, the disability pound another value for them. And then if we've got the money we can spend, you know, and then what it says to them is that we're a valuable customer. And then I think what Open then does with that is, is change big organisations' perception of the whole community being their customer base, if that's what they want. Um, because... We are. We're just a member of the community out there. Yeah, well, you know, 100% agree with that. <laughs> so, yeah, really just to say thank you very much for your time doing the interview. And I'm sure that the listeners and the viewers are going to get a lot out of it. So, yeah, thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you, Martin, for your time. <laughs>